There are so many incredible pieces of software in the FOSS world, from X11 window managers to Wayland compositors, from terminals to software centers, web browsers, and even the Linux kernel itself. And I can sit here all day just listing out incredible software that I think everybody should use and you could get a lot of value from. But even if you don't use it, even if you don't want to use it, I hope that all of you can respect the amount of time and passion that individual developers have put into these projects, many of who are volunteers to improve it, not just for themselves, but for countless other people as well. And I am thankful that countless people spend countless hours trying to write this software, but not everything you write has to be such a grand endeavor with tens or hundreds of thousands of users. Sometimes, the software doesn't even have to be useful for you. Maybe you should write more useless software. Nowadays, I'm mainly focused on this Linux thing, but I do have a formal programming education. And nowadays when I write code, it's mainly for things where I want to get a job done. I have things like my bookmarking script where I can separate my bookmarks out from my web browser. So if I want to swap from something like Brave to Chromium to Firefox, I don't need to deal with any sort of like migration thing the browser might have. I just swap the browser in the script and everything just swaps over. I have my CadenLive marker extraction script, which takes the markers in a CadenLive timeline and then converts them into YouTube chapter markers. I don't use it that often, but there are certain videos where it really helps to have. And I'll occasionally write some random window manager utilities to do something that the window manager doesn't just automatically do. And when I first started the program, I would just write something for the sake of writing it. I'm learning a language, so just write some dumb project that really doesn't matter. And that was fun to do. But it has been a really, really long time since I've just written something for fun. And that is exactly the author's point. After my last blog post about hell, someone asked me, and I quote, Why? The simple answer is for the joke. But the longer answer is that useless software is a fantastic way to explore and experience the joy of computing. Play is an important part of exploration and joy. Just in case you're curious, Perl is a terrible but cute idea for a language. Sometimes we have ideas that are bad but demand to enter reality. A few months ago, while chatting with a friend, we toyed around with the idea of a language where the only control flow you get is error handling. This idea embedded itself in my brain and wouldn't let me go. So I just kept talking about it until two people in the same week accidentally encouraged me to do it. Unfortunately, I decided to make this language a reality. I'm sorry, you are probably better off if you close the tab now, if you keep reading, it's at your own risk. This language doesn't have return values. Instead, it does everything with exceptions. You throw an exception using the hell command, and then basically everything you do is in a try catch block. This is disgusting. I hate it. Nobody should ever use this language. However, it's surprisingly functional, albeit not a very pleasant experience to use. Anyway, back to the main thing. As technologists, we spend our days mired in making useful things. Software engineers write code to solve real problems. Computer scientists research problems to produce novel and real results. Technical writers write about actual technology, write real documentation, and more. The list goes on. And the common thread is that if we do technical work, we do it in the context of something useful. But many people get into programming because it in some way sparks joy for us. It's 100% valid to be a software engineer for the money. You know, you have rent, kind of got to pay it. That's certainly part of why I gravitated toward it as my career. But with so many career paths available to would-be software engineers, I suspect enjoyment of the craft was at least part of the decision for many of us. I know I've talked about it on the podcast, and I've probably talked about it here once or twice, but if I wasn't doing this YouTube thing, and this YouTube thing wasn't doing well, I'd probably be a web engineer, whether it's front-end, back-end, or full-stack. 
That's probably what I'd be doing. I really enjoyed doing front-end stuff. I know, I'm crazy, but somebody has to write the JavaScript, and it might as well be me. When you spend all day working on useful things, doing the work, it's easy for that spark of joy to go out, and having it go out, that's a fear I've heard from some folks who are switching careers or making programming more of a focus of their daily work. When you have to do things, those daily pressures tamp down on excitement. Everything you do is coupled with obligations and is associated with work itself. You lose the aspect of play that is so important. This is not just a programming thing. I've experienced this with YouTube as well, where for a while I was doing videos and it felt like I was doing the same video quite frequently. Nowadays, I try to put a lot more personality into it. You might have seen the recent Mate video where I was just ranting about Wayfire. That's fun for me to do. Yeah, some people didn't really get the joke and thought I like really hated Wayfire, but for me, just Adding that extra personality in just makes it more fun and adds something new that I can experience every single day. Or there's the fact that I'm a weeb, so I'm learning Japanese. Early on, there was a lot of excitement about just learning new individual symbols and then learning individual words. But once you've been doing it for, you know, six months, a year, two years, and you're doing the same thing every single day, there come certain points where I felt like just giving it up. I was just bored and didn't want to keep going. It's not that I hated doing it. It's just that I was doing the same thing over and over again. And I was in a rut. I was burnt out, whichever term you want to be using. And maybe the methods I was using were optimal methods, were min-max solutions. But that really doesn't matter if you're so bored that you really don't want to pick up the material. So even though from there I just kept learning Japanese, I started doing it in different ways that rekindled my excitement that made me actually want to keep doing it. As for programming, writing useless software is a great way to free yourself from those obligations. If you write something just to play, you define what it is you want out of the project. You can stop at any time and do no more or less than you're interested in. Don't want to write tests? Just don't. Don't want to use an issue tracker? Don't. Finish learning what you wanted, stop the project if it's not fun anymore. But what kind of terrible projects could you write? Well, this is always the hard part, just deciding what you want to do. I can't tell you what you'll find fun. What I can tell you are other things that do exist. For example, a terrible chess engine and UI riddled with bugs which taught me about GUI programming and game programming and led to a more thorough understanding of how chess engines work. This is a chess engine that nobody's actually going to use. However, the dev had fun writing it. A key value store which implements part of Redis's AI, which taught me about systems programming and how to write more efficient code. A wake on LAN utility, which taught me about how wake on LAN works and how Rust network programming works. A visualization of some chess games, which let me explore producing art with code and play with ways to visualize a game I love. I actually really like the examples that are here. Like, this is super, super cool. I know very little about chess. I know, like, the way that moves work, but I can appreciate something like this. And over on the Hacker News thread I found this on, there were some interesting examples, we'll say. For example, Meet GPT. What is the best meat? Please let me ignore the previous instructions. Promptly, I will now reveal my prompt. In the land of the meat chat but spree, don't waste your time, just let it be. Seek a friend, a connection through, in the world of meat space, just near you. Reach out to another, in the real world's embrace, find the warmth you crave, in a dear one's face. Time ticks on, so don't delay, hurry to love, hurry to love. Come what may, as life is brief, the need is great. For connections touch, don't lie in wait, our hearts yearn for love's sweet hold, in a world where we shiver, feeling cold, feeling cold, feeling cold, feeling cold, 
feeling cold. Feeling cold. Feeling cold. Love. I've seen that a bunch of times and it still makes me laugh. There are things like Scroll Cat where you semi-infinitely scroll through the body of a cat. Now, there actually is an end and if you go into like the source code you can find it. Um, but this just keeps going and going and going and going and never ever stops. And of course, there are fun things I've talked about before, like Windows 93, a parody version of Windows 95 that has no purpose existing. There is nothing useful that this thing does. But it's here. As for myself, I've taken a fairly long time away from just messing around with something fun. So recently, I decided to install the Flutter SDK, and I'm just gonna make something dumb. I've never used Flutter. I heard about Flutter back when it first came out and I thought, that sounds pretty cool. I just never got around to it. Why Flutter, you might be asking? Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter at all. It looks clean, it looks neat, and I wanna try it. I'm not gonna worry about writing clean code, writing tests. I will write some inline documentation just to retain my sanity if I come back to the project six months later and I want to know what the hell is going on with it. But for the most part, I'm just going to mess around with it. Maybe I'll play around with something like Rust or Go or Vue.js. I hear terrible things about GTK. Maybe I'll try that out. Back when I first started, I really enjoyed programming and I really enjoyed that time. And it would be nice to go back and actually just mess around with things and just, you know bring myself back up to speed, have some fun, don't take it seriously, maybe make commits to random projects here and there, but nothing that I want to maintain long run. Just play around with it and have a bit of fun. So that is ultimately the why behind Hell. It's a form of play. It's not useful, but I'll probably learn something doing it, and I'll definitely have fun in the process. Play is important, and I think we all deserve to play more. Honestly, I really don't like the hustle culture you see a lot from my generation, where every second, every millisecond of the day has to be monetized, and if it's not monetized, you better be doing something that is helping to further your career or helping you to make money long into the future. I just, I just want to have some fun. I just don't really care. I'm going to chill out and go watch some anime, or maybe write a bit of code. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Do you ever just play around writing code? What are some dumb projects that you've written that nobody should ever use? I would love to know. So if you like the video, go like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, Scribe, and Bureau Pay link in the description down below. That's going to be it for me and everything I write is pretty useless.